toutes et tous et merci pour l'intérêt dans ce um, euh, séminaire et systemics. Et um, oui, aujourd'hui, euh, on a un, un sujet qui, qui je, trouve très, je trouve très intéressant. Je vois souvent euh, dans les conférences, um, malheureusement, et je sais c'est le cas pour euh, pas mal de gens qui se sont connectés, euh, je n'ai jamais eu l'opportunité de vraiment suivre ces sujets euh, de la modélisation euh, et l'analyse du transport euh, avec des données MFD. Et aujourd'hui, euh, on a vraiment l'expert sur ce sujet euh, qu'on a pu inviter, euh, Ludovic euh, Leclerc. Euh, juste quelques, quelques détails sur lui. Donc, il a obtenu son euh, diplôme et master en génie civil et le doctorat en 2002 après la HDR en 2009, et il est actuellement professeur à l'Université Gustave Eiffel, directeur adjoint au labo laboratoire licite entre UGE et ENTPE, et là il est responsable… Directeur, j'ai été promu, je suis directeur maintenant. D'accord. <rire> et il est responsable d'un groupe de recherche sur la modélisation et l'analyse du trafic, euh, avec des intérêts sur euh, la modélisation euh, dynamique multi-échelle, euh, multimodal euh, du trafic, euh, les villes intelligentes, euh, les services de mobilité et les systèmes de transport durables. Il est membre de plusieurs comités de rédaction des revues dans le domaine des transports, euh, membre du comité Traffic Flow Theory and Characteristics du Transportation Research Board. Et il, a fait, euh, par, et il fait partie du comité de la conférence ISTT, l'International Symposium on Transport and Traffic Theory. Et en 2015, il a obtenu euh, un ERC Consolidator Grant, euh, la bourse de recherche la plus prestigieuse euh, en Europe. Et avec ça, je vais euh, finir euh, l'introduction. Euh, euh, merci d'avoir accepté euh, notre invitation, euh, Ludovic, et euh, euh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So today, I'm going to present uh, some research uh, about, uh, indeed, uh, how we can use uh, MFD, so macroscopic, macroscopic sorry, fundamental diagram uh, concepts uh, for modeling. And I will focus on a very specific uh, implementation of this model, uh, which is called the tree-based MFD. Uh, so the presentation, of course, include many uh, co-authors uh, and many different papers, and you will see this, uh, these uh, papers mentioned during the, the presentation. Let me first give a brief introduction about the notion of macroscopic urban model. The main idea is that uh, we have on one hand uh, the classical uh, uh, representation for traffic when you want to do uh, traffic management and this is the, 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 the dynamic models. So here, for example, you have an example of a microscopic model. And on the other hand, you have uh, models that are more used to do planning and, and, and forecast at a larger scale. And these models uh, embeds a notion of, of congestion, but usually it's a static representation of, of the congestion because the main features are rated of cost and, uh, and user cost. So the concept of urban macroscopic model is basically to try to do something in between, in that sense that you will have a model that is uh, able to, uh, to simulate large-scale urban network that's uh, to consider uh, the, co the traffic congestion, but also that have a computational time that remain uh, available to do optimization and, and, and control. So this is the full concept. And in that sense, uh, this is something that uh, is in the same uh, area of application as uh, MATSIM that you certainly know, but with, uh, with uh, better computational time. So the concept is uh, the following. When you look at a network, uh, it has been proven that uh, when you aggregate everything, meaning the network topology, the, 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 the local uh, traffic characteristic and, 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 and the fundamental diagram, and also the, the root choices, you have something which is called the microscopic fundamental diagram that represents the traffic states at the network level or at the regional level. 
and these concepts uh, relate basically the travel production or the mean flow to the accumulation. So how how the the network uh, the the mean flow inside the regions versus the the level of of, of vehicles of of the versus the quantity of vehicles you have in the network. So through density of the accumulation, you can do that for one mode or you can do that for many modes. So here you have an example uh, where you have two modes of transportation, uh, car and buses, and you see that we can relate the, the, the travel production to both accumulation, but also we can do the same uh, when we look at the mean speed. So in short, we really look at how the, the traffic can, 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 can flow inside the regions through the mean speed versus uh, the, the, the the accumulation of, of the different vehicles. And obviously you can generalize this to many modes of transportation. Now, if you look in terms of modeling concept, the, the modeling concept is what we call the, the reservoir, meaning that we, we take a, re, uh, a, a urban region, just like this here is a fixed district uh, of Lyon. You uh, you associate to each regions uh, one uh, one reservoir where you are going you you track the accumulation the number of vehicles and the main uh, the main uh, the key ingredient of this modeling framework is the characterization of the flow exchange and the characterization of the flow exchange is given by uh, the the MFD and. In, in terms of equations, it's quite simple because in each region you, are, you, you track the variation of, of the number of vehicles. So here is for only one mode, but of course we can do that for many modes. And it's equal to the inflow minus the outflow and the outflow is given by, by as I said, the production given by the fundamental diagram. And another key ingredient, which is, uh, which is the, the trip lens. So, and it's also very important because when we are I'm, I'm going to uh, stress uh, how we can calibrate this kind of, of model in the field. And if you want to do the complete calibration of the supply side, because I'm, I'm not I'm not going to speak about the demand and the demand settings in, in my presentation. I'm going to focus on, on, on the supply. You need to both estimate the fundamental diagram and, and the trip lanes. Uh, there is another uh, representation, so a, a kind of an alternative, and this this is uh, my main uh, main uh, main uh, element for my presentation today. Today, which is called the trip representation. So you take a regions, so it is the same region. So if we have multiple regions, this happens inside the regions. And the idea is that instead of uh, directly tracking uh, the accumulation of the vehicles. We track all uh, users in the system. So users are, can be different kind of vehicles, and we assign to each uh, users or each vehicles a trip lens. And obviously, the trip lens can be different depending on their origin, destination, mode of transportation, or whatever. And uh, the 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 collective motion of the user within these regions are going to be represented by the Microscopic fundamental diagram again, but in speed. So at one time step, all users uh, from the same mode of transportation have the same speed, and this speed depends on the the, um, the density of traffic you have inside this region. So in terms of equation, uh, again, I'm, I'm not. I will not uh, really insist on that, but I just want to show you the the, the general principle. So the general principle is very simple, meaning that for all vehicles, all users, all individuals you have in the system, what we want is that the integration of the speed should be equal to the to the, over time should be equal to the trip length. So this is the the the, the perfect definition of the notion of of uh, mean speed and and and, and trip lengths when 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 you 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 drive along the, your trajectory you should uh, you should by integration of the speed get uh, the trip lengths so you have more fancy representation that have been derived uh, from that especially some continuous conservation uh, from continuous formulation it's very useful to do some uh, some uh, kind of optimization but today i'm I'm, will i will focus only on on, on the, the the very simple uh, settings where we look at uh, each individuals and we simply look at the entry and exit time uh, in the regions 
with respect to their mode of transportation. So we can we can uh, draw two curves: the in the cumulative inflow and the cumulative outflow. Uh, with, with that represent when the, the the individuals enter and exit the regions. And based on that and the mean speed, we can have a very fast uh, computational uh, and very efficient numerical scheme to solve this kind of, of representation. So this is for, for, for the basic of the modeling. I will not insist that much on this. What I want really to focus today is more on the calibration and the application. Um, just to mention this, uh, of course, uh, what I just presented is for one region. So when you have a city and when you partition the city in different regions, then you have to handle the multi-regional system. And for that, uh, we need to define what we call regional routing, meaning a, a framework that is able to define what are going to be the, the movements uh, between regions from one local origin to one local destination. Again, um, uh, so now uh, let's uh, let's discuss calibration because uh, when you want to to run this kind of model, it's important first to to know how to to calibrate them uh, using uh, real data. So first uh, element you need to calibrate is the MFD curve. So for that, uh, there have been quite extensive uh, literature uh, that speak about this uh, challenge and. I should say that even it's, if it looks simple and you can see many uh, MFD uh, curve in papers, uh, there are still some significant uh, challenges when you want to really apply it in the field. The, 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 the first one is, uh, and I, I try to list uh, the different uh, challenges. The first one is uh, what I call scalability, meaning that uh, even though you have uh, a nice uh, sensor networks uh, within your city, usually you only ob observe a part of the road. So if you think about loop detectors, for example, they will cover ma mainly 5% of all uh, link. If you think about probe vehicles, if you have probe vehicles, they will cover maybe 5 10% of the total traffic, even less sometimes. So. Every time you have uh, traffic data, you have uh, traffic data that are local in space and time. And if you want to estimate the MFD, of course, you have to scale this to the full population. And this is one, uh, one issue. The second one is observability, especially when you want to apply this curve in a multimodal context. That means you need to know somehow the travel time of uh, all, uh, all mode of transportation which is not that difficult, uh, even though it requires some, uh, some uh, an, uh, uh, very strong data framework. But more important, you need to know the, 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 the accumulation of the, of the vehicles to relate the speed to the accumulation. And usually, consider, if you consider one region, uh, being able to estimate for e each mode of transportation how many uh, vehicles or how many users you have is not necessarily something that is trivial. Uh, the question of homogeneity, because the, the concept of, of the MFD works very well when you have homogeneous traffic condition within the region. This is why basically we need to partition cities. And also the question of, of, of stability, because uh, if you look at the earliest work about MFD, they, they state that the MFD should be uh, independent to the demand or to the to the to the to the Basically, that the MAD is is kind of a static representation of a network. But if if you look into the the details, and now we know that uh, if the demand pattern change in the local traffic control change, the local management strategy change, you 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 will have to recalibrate your MFD because you can have some changes. Fortunately, I mean, when you look at long term longitudinal studies, uh, especially a work that has been done uh, with uh, between uh, the University of, uh, of Zurich and myself, we, uh, for, for example, for the city of Zurich over one year, we, we, we were able to show that basically with five, uh, five different MFD curves, we are able to represent mostly all the day uh, over the year. So that means that even though there has these challenges, there is some robustness and some repeatability in, 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 in the, the traffic patterns, meaning that we should be able to, after the data analysis, have an MFD to associate to each day uh, in order to do modeling or, 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 or control. 
Just to show you something which uh, was a collaboration with uh, the, the, the the team of Professor Jolie Muniz, uh, it's um, basically uh, the calibration of the MFD in the context where we know everything. And we know everything because a swarm of drone uh, has uh, take uh, videos from the downtown in Athens and we have the trajectory of all vehicles. And if we have everything, obviously we can uh, easily estimate what the MFD is. So this is the results uh, when you look at unimodal uh, speed regression, meaning when you look at uh, the, the evolution of the speed with respect, with, with respect to the accumulation, but considering each mode separately. So if you look at that, you have two colors. One, uh, the orange one is for uh, when you focus only on the running speed, meaning that you remove all the stop, and the blue one is the actual mean speed, considering also the stops. So you see a trend, but uh, this trend is not uh, is not uh, very nice. So we can do, uh, of course, uh, try to improve this and and try to fit uh, a, a multimodal model and, and to to try to have a multimodal regression. So this is what we, we did. And what is interesting here is that you, uh, so each graph represents the coefficient of the multimodal regression for uh, for for uh, different modes. So you have uh, the car, the taxi, in the middle, the buses. Uh, MV is for middle size uh, truck. Uh, PTV is for um, uh, basically two wheelers. Uh, and you see uh, the relative influence uh, of uh, the mode over the others. For example, if you look at the car, we see that the car is uh, strongly influenced by the buses. Uh, we are strongly influenced by the two wheelers, and they are less less in influence. Uh, for, sorry, they are uh, strongly influenced by the taxi, by the buses, and the two wheelers. But if we look at the two wheelers, you see that they are mostly influenced by themselves. So they are able to, to, to so if you have a concentration of two wheelers, then the speed will be decreases, but it's not really related to the accumulation of, of the other mode. What is interesting if we look at, at this uh, regression is that you clearly see that uh, the, the comparison between unimodal and multimodal regression show a strong uh, improvement when we do multimodal regression, meaning that indeed uh, to determine the speed of, uh, of uh, vehicles, it's important to consider not only this category of vehicles, but all the users uh, that share the same piece of road to really understand um, what, what, is going, what are the, 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 the traffic condition, whatever the mode is. Um, so here I show you how we can look at the relation between the speed and the accumulations. Uh, but in the, in the literature, you also have other uh, curves that have been proposed, shape, I would say, that have been proposed to relate network variables. And especially there is one which is uh, quite popular. Uh, it is uh, known as the two-fin model. And the two-fin model, you can uh, easily uh, extend it uh, to a multimodal version as well. And the main idea is that the mean speed is not related to the accumulation, but the fraction of time when the vehicle has stopped. And because we had all the data and we know all the trajectory, it was possible for us to also look at this model and see if this kind of shape could be a better representation of the, the, network, the network relation between the traffic variables. And this is what we have when we look at the multimodal two field models. Uh, you see uh, the relation, so it's not the speed, it's, it, it's, the, it's the, um, the travel time per meter. Uh, so it's, it's basically the inverse of the speed. Uh, and you see that uh, when we look at the trend uh, and we look at the empirical data and the, the data we have uh, with the, the, the multimodal regression, we see a very good match when we use this model. And if you look at, at, uh, at the, the quality of the regression, and here uh, you have the, the R square for uh, the different modes. Um, you see that uh, uh, using the two field model versus the classical, so the classical is the classical shape of the MFD, uh, always improves the quality of the regression. So this, this is interesting in terms of, uh, of, of characterization of the network states. 
but uh, this is not very useful in terms of modeling because um, uh, if you look at the two fluid model, I mean, um, when you have uh, the speed and the f fraction of of uh, stop time, it's not possible to 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 easily write a dynamic equation that will give you the evolution on one variable with respect to the others, meaning that at one point we are always uh, forced to reintroduce the accumulation. And if we are to reintroduce the accumulation, that means that we will have also to fit the relation between the accumulation and the stop time. So in the end, in terms of modeling, I would say that the two fluid model is not necessarily something that is really powerful in terms of as a modeling tool. But in terms of characterization of, of the traffic test, it's, it's uh, quite interesting. Now I will move to the second part of, of the calibration. So now you see how we can uh, estimate the MFD. And, but we also need to estimate the trip length. Uh, and it's very important because uh, uh, first, if we try to define what, is, uh, what are the issues, uh, let's consider multi-regional settings and let's consider one region, for example, the green in the middle here, and let's uh, think about how we can characterize the trip length. So you have several versions. You can, correct, you can define a mean trip length for all the vehicles in the region, or you can start to disaggregate this uh, mean tree plans into different sub uh, uh, components that will certainly better be, better describe the, the characteristic of the traffic. And in particular, in particular, what uh, we do is that we can uh, define a mean tree plans, for example, per destination of per next uh, regions, or depending on the origin and, and destination or the previous region or the next region. And if we do that, I mean, you have here just a simulation of, again, the sixth district of Lyon. And what is important to, to notice here is that uh, when you run the simulation, you can have a very different uh, evolution of the traffic state within the regions, depending on the way you represent the trips. And what is important, I mean, the main, the, you see that there is a threshold here between the representation M1 and M2 that Bruce Lee go, uh, gives similar results and M3 and M4, and M1 is just a, a single mid speed, M2 is a mid speed per destination, and it's it starts becoming uh, different when you consider the origin. So M3 is, is when you look at the, the previous region and the next region, and M4 is when you look at the full path inside the network. And what is important, and, and that makes sense, when you have regions that uh, may have a network that are, are going to be um, um, uh, uh, where the users are going to have a different paths because of, of the region's uh, topology and geometry, it's important to uh, account for the origin and the destination, at least the previous region you come from and the next region you want to go to. Another uh, very interesting result uh, is that when you want to use a new, so new data sources to try to do this uh, trip length estimation, one uh, one source of data which is very appealing is uh, cell phone data, and this is uh, what we did, for example, with uh, one colleague colleague from Berkeley that uh, that had um, data for uh, six months uh, for the full region of of uh, Dallas City, so a very big urban region. We uh, basically collect all the data from all the region and all the region and destination in order to estimate the trip length. So if when you have this level of details, it's very easy to aggregate um, uh, the, the, the trip lengths and define a mean trip length per regions. So here, what we were interested in is more about the evolution in time of these trip lengths. So uh, if uh, you look at one specific region, and for example, the full, uh, full uh, Dallas area, and if we look at, 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 at the trip lengths, we see some variation. And to express this variation, we define the notion of uh, detour ratio. The detour ratio is uh, the ratio between the actual trip lengths and the Euclidean uh, trip lengths between the origin and destination. And what you see is that, and, and th this is a result that we were able to replicate uh, for different uh, network. When, when you are close to the free flow condition, here, this data ratio uh, tends uh, on average to 1.1, 1 1.2. It's quite stable. 
And this basically corresponds to the, 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 the actual ratio between the shortest passing distance over the Euclidean distance uh, of, uh, or between origin and destination. But when the networks become more congested, and here you have the normalized mean speed um, over the network, what you see is that the, the user starts uh, taking much longer routes to avoid uh, certainly uh, bottlenecks and heavy congestion. And you see that uh, the, the ratio that you may have can be as much as uh, four times the Euclidean distance uh, when we have a network which is heavily congested. So we cannot consider the triplets to be something which is constant, and we need to relate the triplets to the actual traffic condition. So we have to have a loop when we know the accumulation, we have to object, up, update the triplets to account for, for this uh, relation. And the data ratio is a kind of uh, macroscopic factors that is easy to use to, to, to perform this kind of uh, um, uh, correction. Finally, I just want to mention uh, an, uh, another way to run a tree-based simulation. Uh, if you don't want to, uh, to pre-calculate all tree plans and uh, uh, make an extensive data analysis of the, 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 the trips over, over a region, simply because you don't have the data, one option is to use uh, what we call the hybrid tree-based uh, model. Uh, in short, the motion of, of, of the users is still given by the, the, the MFD, by the speed MFD, but you calculate the trip lengths directly on the real network and it can be multimodal, so you can really look for different alternatives uh, by bus, by bike, by, by, by car or whatever, but you calculate for every original destination given by, by the demand. And this is where, I mean, uh, um, uh, synthetic population uh, is very useful because it gives you uh, the, the origin and the destination of, of, of the trips. You can simply calculate uh, what are the, 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 the distance on the real network. And this is something that we have implemented in our uh, simulation package, which is named MNMs for multimodal network modeling and simulation. So the... the uh, next part of my presentation will be to show you some application of this and, and what we can do with uh, this kind of uh, modeling framework. And the first uh, application I would like to mention is uh, the assessments of uh, different uh, mobility service and especially e-hailing and ride sharing system. So uh, the test case is uh, the full city of Lyon. Uh, so you see the, the, the scale about 80 kilometers. And uh, the idea is that we have uh, derived a synthetic population uh, over this uh, region, and uh, we are going to test different uh, into, uh, different market share for mobility services. So we start from users that uh, at the beginning take their car to go from uh, their origin and destination, and we we look at what what could be the network uh, the traffic condition if we start uh, uh, instead of using a personal car, uh, introducing a mobility services that is going to take a part of these trips and uh, serve them. Um, and, and you see, uh, for example, in, in these regions, it's it's roughly uh, over the peak hour, it represents uh, about uh, five, uh, 500,000 uh, uh, trips within the region. So uh, let's first uh, look at an uh, e-link system. So here, I mean, that means that the, 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 the vehicles can take only one passenger. So you have the simulation. So what you see, the, the evolution of the accumulation versus time. So the, the, the dark blue uh, formulation is when all users take their individual uh, personal car. And you start increasing the market share. And what you will see is basically that you worsen the, the, the traffic condition, which is not surprising because uh, you, you, move, uh, you move from a system where the vehicle goes strictly for their origin to the destination to a system where the car have to do uh, inter trips between drop up and pick up. So you increase the total travel distance and uh, you obviously uh, worsen the traffic condition. 
I forgot to mention, but in that uh, in that uh, study, we assumed that we know perfectly the demand, so we were able to run uh, optimal uh, uh, to run algorithm to get the optimal pickup and delivery um, uh, plan for, for 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 the users, so to have kind of a benchmark when we operate the mobility services at the best of its capacities. Now it comes interesting when you start doing sharing. Uh, you see that uh, again, the dark blue is the reference. Uh, when you don't share, I mean, uh, and you, you transform 100% of the trip into, uh, and you move them to the mobility services, it increases the congestion. But when you start share sharing, you see that you have a significant uh, impact on the traffic condition because you move from the blue to the yellow and then to the to the to the purple and so on. And so at one point, it's you have a kind of saturation of the system. You, you cannot really gain more than this. But the step between zero and one, meaning meaning uh, two people uh, can uh, be in the same car uh, at the same moment is really significant at uh, at this uh, scale. We also try to estimate to look at uh, different uh, capacities uh, for the vehicles for 6, 10, 20. What is interesting here is that if you remove the capacity restriction and you solve the problem, you can have directly through the result of the optimal planning a, a, a good idea about what kind of fleet you will need to serve the user at best, meaning that you will know how many uh, uh, um, shuttle you need, how many small vehicle you need, and so on, because you will you can look at the planning of all the vehicles and you know uh, what are the maximal number of users that are, are going to use this specific vehicle over the day. Another application of the tree-based modeling uh, framework is something that we did to, and, and we are currently uh, basically doing, uh, to manage uh, the demand. So it's a demand management strategy with what is called tradable credit scheme. So how does it work? The general idea is that just like, uh, I mean, you all know, um, you all know uh, license uh, plate rationing, meaning that during uh, uh, emission peak, uh, only odd numbers or um, I mean only half the car are supposed to be able to, to drive that day. The idea is to make something uh, which is a little bit more flexible, meaning that each user will receive a, a free budget uh, for traveling. For example, they will receive uh, every week um, three credits. Considering that to use your car over one day, you need one credit. So if you receive three credits and you want to, to go to work a five day a week, that means that for the two remaining days, you will have to buy some credits. And so there is a marketplace where you can exchange credits among users. So those that are taking public transport every day will uh, obviously um, be able to earn some money and those who want to take their car every day will have to pay money uh, to the to the other using uh, to the other um, uh, users here what is interesting is that uh, i mean uh, the other alternative and this is something that is uh, well known is pricing meaning you 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 do congestion start or you 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 you, you define a, a price to to enter the city the thing is that when you define a price, you never know how many users will uh, finally pay for, for the tickets to enter the city. With this kind of scheme, it's uh, what is called quantitative-based uh, scheme, meaning that you know exactly how many users you will allow to um, enter your regions, because the, based on the number of credit you distribute at the beginning of the week, it, you directly impose the quantity of users you want to uh, you allow to use your network and you can charge obviously the car but you can also for example uh, uh, charge differently uh, um, carpooling or uh, electric vehicles or whatever so you can really define uh, what, what exactly what you want to allow in your network and this is users through the trading that will uh, that will arbitrate among the options they have and uh, find what is the best uh, the best uh, option for themselves. 
So the modding framework we use is a trip-based MFD. Uh, we uh, create, uh, so this is uh, what, what is usually called uh, 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 population downscaling or, uh, or uh, uh, creation of, of group when you, you speak about uh, multi-agent uh, system. So we group users that have a similar origin and destination and departure time. And those users will be able to choose between cars and public transport. So for the public transport alternative, we simply look at the timetable of, of the public transport. And this gives us a reference uh, travel time depending on the departure time for those users. For the, the, the car users, uh, we use uh, a tree-based MFD simulation to determine the travel time. And obviously, you have a, a, a choice model at the beginning that's is looking at, at, at the cost, and the cost embeds the travel time of both modes, but it also embeds the, the cost of the credit, because if you have to pay some credits to, 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 to drive a specific day, then you have a different perception of the cost over the different alternative. So based on all that, we are able to calculate the network equilibrium. I will skip this and run the simulation for exactly the same settings, so I already introduced the test case of Lyon. It's the same demand, same peak hours, same, same everything. But now we are looking at, at, at the at demand management scheme. And you have here some comparison. So we compare a tradable credit scheme with congestion pricing, meaning that uh, we had a fixed price to, uh, to, to, um, for driving a car. And also we compare it with uh, license plate rationing. So here are the final, uh, the final uh, comparison. So let me explain. Uh, on the x-axis, you have the total social cost. So it's the addition of all costs suffered by users. And over the y-axis, you have the total CO2 emission. The red dot is basically the reference scenario when you do nothing. And uh, the orange curve is when you start implementing uh, license place rationing. So why do we have different value? Because uh, basically it's, we, we, we know how license place rationing uh, works, especially in France. Even if you implement this scheme, not everyone um, accept it and, 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 and um, follow the rule. So here, uh, zero percent mean everyone uh, follow the rule, and you see that you cut the CO two emission by two, and twenty percent meaning that twenty percent of the of the user will not follow the rule. Forty percent, sixty percent, eighty percent, and obviously one hundred percent is there. So while license place rationing is um, uh, reduce the CO two, it tends to significantly increase the social cost. Why? Why? Because we introduce in, in the in the framework uh, some uh, some daily preference to use your car. For example, uh, you really need to use your car on Tuesday because I don't know you have to pick your kids at, at school or you have to to go shopping or whatever. So each users also have some daily preference to use um, their car, and uh, obviously with license plate pressuring. It's, you can very well uh, be in the situation that you will not be able to take your car the day you really need it. So, uh, and we penalize this uh, uh, within the social cost. So this is why we see such a significant difference. And now we, we move to pricing and, uh, and tradable credit scheme. You see that overall, in terms of network preference, uh, pricing and, 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 and tradable credit scheme achieve nearly the same objective both in terms of social cost or in terms of uh, CO2 reduction. So that is good, uh, but uh, the, the thing is that um, the, 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 the tradable credit scheme is more, much more flexible, and you can see this, uh, it's more flexible because uh, um, somehow you can really define when you have your allocation, you can define when you really need your car, keep your credit for that, only trade what you uh, you really need uh, to match your preferences. And in particular, when you have a good alternative for public transportation, you have a significant incentive to move to this mode of transportation because you will be able to sell your credit and make money over there. 
Uh, here you have uh, a more user-centric um, um, uh, indicator of this uh, different uh, strategy, which is which we call the satisfaction rate, and basically we measure uh, how frequently we are not able to match our uh, daily preferences. And again, remember that we have flagged some days where you really need to take your car. So with uh, pricing and license place rationing, you see that you can nearly uh, satisfy uh, your uh, your expectation because you can choose to pay that day or to trade credits uh, when uh, when uh, it's uh, needed. And with license place rationing, it's uh, something which is much more uh, much less uh, flexible. And especially if you you look at uh, the situation where everyone fulfills the obligation. Obviously, the satisfaction rate uh, is 50 percent because uh, the, 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 the chance that you cannot take uh, the, your car the day you need it is one over two. OK, um, I think that's it. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I will skip this one and I think uh, maybe I will uh, go for question and if if you if we still have time at the end, I can go back to this uh, final presentation. OK, thank you. That uh, was uh, very interesting. Thank you. So I, I would have a couple of questions, but maybe we can first check if there are any questions of um, the people who are who are also watching the presentation. So are, are there any questions? I stop sharing just to be able to see you guys, if possible. See there for the for the discussion. I think there's one question in the chat. Uh, one moment. So there's. In fact, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So there's Mila who is saying the traffic network could be represented by graphs, and the traffic flow could be influenced by the topo topology of the graph or agency matrices. Do you have used or considered to use a model which takes into account the spatial impact of traffic flow, um, for for example, the graph uh, neural networks? OK, I mean, uh, the thing is that when you have the, the MFD, I mean, the MFD is the aggregation of everything. So the question is how you want to estimate your MFD. If you do it directly from uh, ground truth data, I mean, you will have the result of all this interaction directly within your data. So you don't need to use the specific tools to get it. You just have to observe it. But obviously, we, you will not be able to predict it. So if you make change in your network topology, you change the traffic control or you make significant change in the demand, that means you, you may need to recalibrate. And this is uh, not easy. For example, uh, recently I discussed with uh, Professor Auxen, Axausen, sorry, that's uh, try to, to, to look at how could be a city if you uh, allocate 50% of the space to bike. And his question was, can we know what will be the resulting MFD if I do that? It's, it's not an easy question because that means that we now need a tool that is able to transform the, the new network into a new MFD. So we know a few things. Uh, for some configuration, we know exactly how to do that when we have arterial, for example, even multi even if we have multimodal traffic. But when we start having complex uh, network to to topology, we have bottlenecks or a spillback that can happen uh, almost everywhere, or we are not able to really define where this will happen. We don't have, uh, uh, for now, a direct tool to make the connection between the network the control, the demand, and the MFD. So, I mean, this, any kind of, of, of uh, methods can, can be uh, envisioned there, but uh, I would say that there is no uh, obvious solution for now. So, so this means if we would uh, want to apply MFD simulation to like a, like a city where we don't have any uh, traffic observations, there, there wouldn't be like a... Um, I don't know, like a scheme, just uh, looking at the general attributes of the network, for instance, to kind of transfer maybe some some knowledge. Yeah, they, they have. I mean, there is there is some work uh, on that direction. For example, Professor Laval did something which is 
called stochastic vibrational theory that try to use basically some key characteristic between the, the length of, 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 of the link and the, the ratio of uh, the green ratio at the intersection because the capacity at the intersection is very important. So there are some, there are this work. The, the, the team of, uh, of uh, Professor Menendez try to relate uh, the shape of the MFD to some general parameters of the networks. Uh, so they, they have some work uh, in this direction. I recently worked with um, some colleague again at uh, at TUM and, and ETH about how we can try to use rational theory to, to make this kind of derivation. But I would say that we have no general recipe that will guarantee that we have a tight estimate of the MFD in that situation. Okay, thank you. So there's a question of uh, of Faisal. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you uh, for this uh, nice uh, presentation. I, uh, I have a question about uh, experiments uh, uh, related to GPS uh, data. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, could you precise more how the experiment uh, was performed? I I'm curious to know uh, if um, the, the, uh, the, the people who participated in the experiments have uh, some specific recommendations or there was any... Uh, yeah. It's a to, good question. If there is, a, to, to, if there is a, a random part in, in the data, in fact. Okay, so good question. I mean, this this uh, presentation is recorded and and will be published on YouTube. So I will be very careful about the, the answering. Ah. Um, in short, I mean, uh, uh, the data have been collected by directly by the um, cell phone operators, and this data embeds uh, GPS information at a very high frequency meaning that it's very easy uh, to uh, reconstruct uh, from this uh, data the actual path of the users over the network. And based on that, uh, for, for us, we have origin, destination, departure time, trip lengths. It's, it's easy also to make some estimation about the, the, the average speed over the network. And this is how we were able to, to make the relation between the data ratio and 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 the speed. Okay, but but uh, there there, uh, there was not specific um, recommendation with respect to of if, for example, user A or user B had to go from uh, um, from the departure A to destination B. There is no uh, specific no. Uh, trajectory. The, the user was not even informed that they were recording for this experiment. I mean, it's ah, it's cell phone okay. information. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, the other question, but uh, it is uh, rather on, on the form, I think. In one in one of the slides, you showed some um, some kind of piecewise curves for the data. I think I think a uh, car or trip sharing. And um, if you could precise, uh, this can be attributed to what? Uh, you mean I think uh, the the piecewise linear curve were uh, the, the basically the relation between not the, the mean speed but the inverse of the mean speed with respect to the stop time of each mode of transportation. So I mean you, you clearly see that when you take uh, let's say let's consider cars, the more cars are stopped uh, because of traffic, because of congestion and so on, the 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 the, the Worse will be the level of service, the network performances, and the lower will be the speed. So the only thing is that's, and it's not really linear. I mean, it's, it's more uh, poor or low. Uh, you you can relate uh, the mean speed or the the, the 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 travel time per meter to to this uh, this um, uh, variable that basically uh, is a good proxy for the level of saturation of your network. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, uh, there was another question from Reda, but I think it was similar to my question, basically taking the MFT from one city, bringing it to, to, to another city. Um, but maybe so. And you, you said, well, it's not so easy yet. Um, maybe one follow up question on this. Uh, have there been any experience meant maybe to, I don't know, to maybe uh, apply MFDs from, from one city to another city where the counts are there doing simulations and then checking if it uh, if it fits more or less, this kind of validation? Uh, 
No, I mean, there have been a very uh, extensive efforts led by, uh, by, uh, by ETH to collect uh, data from multiple cities. So they have a database with more than 50 cities in the world uh, where you have traffic counts, uh, speed sometimes, not really prob, but traffic counts mainly. And based on that, uh, they were able to really try to make, I mean, this, is, this was one of the unique attempts to really relate the MFD shape with some uh, key factors, key characteristic of, of the network, right? But um, uh, I should admit that I never see someone trying to guess whatever you guess it's an MFD and try to, to, to see uh, how far it is to the, to the, to the real one. Except maybe, I mean, uh, uh, Professor Laval uh, has this kind of uh, uh, aggregate approach when you try to have this kind of uh, define some uh, key characteristic, uh, key factors of the of the network structures, and try to relate this to, to, to the MFD. But again, he did he did it in the other way, meaning that it takes many data, he, he estimates the MFD, look at the characteristic, and gather them saying, oh, look, you have all these uh, cities that look similar. It's maybe because, and, and so on. Thank you. Reda, is this answering the question or you want to, to follow up? Right, thanks. It's, it's okay. quite clear. So I just was wondering if we can identify patterns and then uh, eventually uh, uh, split it into different patterns and then maybe we can have an optimal choice for a pattern and then maybe we can generalize for a city. Yeah, I'm not expert, so I, I don't want to deep dive in that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, I mean, if you have the data of the city, of course, I mean, you can really improve by doing partitioning, uh, pattern recognition and whatever. To, to 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 really tune your uh, MFD curve and have a good estimation within the city. The question is, when you have nothing, this is where it's it's, it's become difficult because it's it's really the I mean an MFD is not only the topology is also with the, the the way the the traffic control work and the capacity and the at the intersection because it, it can dramatically change. Uh, the, the the shape uh, depending of if we have well uh, managed uh, traffic signals or badly managed traffic signals and 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 traffic signals that are adaptive or fixed or whatever and also the demand patterns if if the use the the overall audiometric change it changed the, the the flow within the city and it will change the MFD so you need to have a piece a piece of these three elements if you want to get your shape. Okay, there's another question from Arthur. Yes, thank you for your presentation. So I was wondering, I'm uh, often interested in geographical, geographical uh, questions. And um, I was wondering, uh, are there some kind of rules or optimization you have to consider when building the reservoir? I mean, splitting the network into different reservoirs. Uh, for example, you could say we have only two reservoirs for uh, Huge city as uh, Detroit, or I don't know which city you were showing uh, lately. Uh, or you can say it's uh, 100 uh, uh, reservoir. Uh, there is no single answer to this question. I mean, if you really, I mean, if you really stick to the core definition of the MFD, what you want to have is homogeneous traffic situation. So you really want to do the partitioning in that sense. The congestion is at one place uh, and, and the other traffic state are, are other places. And, 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 and when you want to do that, I mean, it really depends on, on, on the congestion patterns you may have on your network. So this is not, I mean, it depends on what you observe. But there is also uh, many ways of trying to have something which is, I would say, a little bit more robust, maybe not optimal in terms of, of reducing the variance of the states uh, to define the MFD, but which is a little bit more robust because it's more stat, uh, it's more related to the to the structure of the, of the network. And there have been many work in, in that direction. One could be, for example, to try to identify what are the key intersection. I mean, the intersection with um, a lot of um, inbound and outbounds, for example, and then you try to, uh, to to spread them in an homogeneous manner. So you want to create cre cohesion when you have, will have the same uh, number of key intersections. And if you do that, somehow 
uh, at least you have uh, something that will um, will uh, is most more likely to have homogeneous traffic condition than other random uh, distribution. Okay, thank you. I did not. Uh, I was not thinking about this uh, possibility to check the most uh, important intersection. It's interesting uh, yeah. way to build. Yeah, you, you know the the Bluetoothness centrality, for example. This give you uh, 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 this help you to flag your nodes, and 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 then you can say, okay, I just want to have a, um, uh, a partitioning where I'm sure that uh, the 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 distribution of of Bluetoothness compatibility is roughly the same over the different uh, regions uh, and and then that you can do without any uh, specific traffic data okay thanks mm -hmm. uh, any other questions maybe me i would have a, a like a last one a bit more practical one like you were talking about the uh, um, mmns framework uh, yes, if, if I uh, got it correctly, so so what can you do with it? What can we do with it? So uh, it's a simulation package. Uh, it's uh, we, we, I mean we are penalizing the test. So we 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 did uh, the, the the main core um, uh, coding uh, next last year, and we are finalizing the test, and we will make it open source in in the next couple of weeks, maybe months, but not more. And it's the, the concept is really uh, it, it, the, the core concept is related to the to the to the tree based MFD. So in short, I mean you have the, the real networks with all multimodal options, so it's completely multimodal. You, you start from from a synthetic population, just like what you you you, you may create with uh, with your framework, and and each users will then start looking at at, at the options travel options within the network. So we have obviously something that look at the, the, all the paths with the different modes. And then we have a, a choice model. So for now it's just a log, log it one, but you can put whatever you want. That will give you which a mode of transportation you, 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 you will carry. So public transportation, car, um, mobility services, and so on. And uh, based on that, uh, the, the vehicle themselves will move following the tree based MFD. So they will pick the users at one origin and uh, move into the move uh, within the real network, but using the mean speed. So the, the regional local speed. So what you have to do in terms of calibration is for each region, define the multimodal MFD with respect uh, to the different mode of transportation. And, and then we because we wanted to make it uh, really multimodal, we have uh, a component that do fleet management. So you, if you request a mobility services, uh, this is the one that will allocate one vehicles that will go and pick you, give you an estimation of the waiting time and, and so on and so on. So we can really have uh, cars, public transportation, and mobility services and active modes as options for traveling. So in short, it's Maxim, you know Maxim very well. So the only thing is that you change the, the, the coordinate dynamics and what you use is uh, the tree-based MFD concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's interesting. This this would have been another question how to integrate this, for instance, in Matsim, but this is basically the other approach, basically uh, having it uh, yeah. the, the other way around, because often like we also do studies, for instance, integrating the Grand Paris Express, uh, and then yeah. we don't really need this really detailed individual vehicles moving all uh, one by one. So this is definitely interesting. So we we can check this out, especially with yeah. uh, Tarek. It's great pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so uh, I got a message. Ah, that's just uh, Reda saying thank you. Uh, so yeah, I would also say, uh, say thank you. And um, I guess if there are no uh, questions left, then uh, th this is it. And uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. My pleasure. Have a good afternoon, nice weekend, and uh, see you around.